Facebook Live, we have arrived. Let's get it in. Conference muted. Conference recording started. I want to thank everybody for chiming in. This is Watchman Yahuda Israel, also known as Pastor Derek Mann, on Early What I Seek These Scripture Study and Prayer Line on the 16th day in April 2019. Y'all, let's dive in the Word. Uh, let's go to... Um, Good question here, but let's go. Let's go to. Let's go. Let's go to. Uh, Second Corinthians ten. Again, starting at the third third verse. How you doing, Trenda? Uh, Raya. Richly bent. Coat Don. Nicole. And the beat goes on. Second Corinthians ten and three. Let's get it in. Look what it said. <clears throat> Charve. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yah to the pulling down of strongholds. Okay. Let's give our, our, ourselves the opportunity to be successful in our relationship with the Creator. And this portion of scripture is describing, you know, where the war takes place. How you doing, Cliff? But where the, we need to know where the war takes place. And the war takes place in your mind. Cutting straight through the chase. The war is how you think. That, that's where the war is. You know, how you we think, right? Because we don't live a, a certain lifestyle without thinking about it. It's all in your, all in your mind, right? So this is what Second Corinthians ten, and three through five is um, describing, right? For though we walk in the flesh, we got a fleshly, natural body, but that's not where the war is. We do not war after the flesh. The body wouldn't even go to war unless it was in your mind first. You wouldn't cuss people out unless it happened in your mind first. You got to know where the war is. People think it's physical. No, there's something behind the scenes. That's why when your enemy is after you, he defeats you if he can get you mentally. If he can take over your thinking, control what you think, you're doomed. You lost the battle even before it started. For though we walk in the flesh, we walking around here, but you got some people that got shackles on their brains. And it's over for them. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Y'all remember that song, Free Free Your Mind and the and the rest will follow? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Carnal is natural. No. But mighty through Elohim, mighty through Yah, to the pulling down of strongholds, thoughts. The word come to pull. To pull thoughts down that's controlling your life. That causes us to do what we do. If you're living wrong and going against the most high, it's in your mind. You have a way of thinking that causes you to go against your creator. It's all in the mind. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yah, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. Where do imaginations happen? In the flesh or in your mind? You're, 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 you're imagining things. 
What are you imagining? What are you imagining? Are you imagining what? 50 women in the bins? Scarface? What are you, what are you imagining? Because because that's the problem. If we want to be successful in, in, in being saved, right? You know, it, 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 it describes like, you know, hiding the word in your heart, which is interchangeable with, again, the mind. Your heart is a muscle that's, that's in your chest, right, that, that pumps blood. Um, the 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 heart that the word is talking about is your 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 thinking, where imaginations um, live, desires right, and the word come to cast down carnal, wicked, anti yah imaginations visions and dreams, right? Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yah. So the knowledge of Yah is his word. And we have thoughts, we have imagination. Any high thing, any any stronghold, passions that we have, that exalts itself against the truth of the word, the word will knock it down. If you hide the word in your heart, you're hiding the word in your heart to combat yourself, you, you, the way you think. If, 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 we, if we sat down, right, and recognize, because we do this, right, we'll, we'll admit that we sin will verbally say we're sorry about it. We'll verbally admit that we sin. But how you really walk pleasing in the sight of your creator is you deal with it. You notice how it says, uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. See, the, the word is, 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 you know, like a double-edged sword. And it's a weapon. And it's supposed to cast down the way you think. All right, look at this. Let me show you this. Again, Romans 12 and 2. Look what this say. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. You're going through a transformation process, right? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you have a way of thinking and you're submitting to the creator to go through a mind change. You're willingly doing this. You're skillfully doing this. You're not just arbitrarily this religious church person. No. Uh -uh. You might have been in the past. But now we got to understand we're at war and we have weapons. And there's spiritual weapons because there's a war going on and the war is happening in your mind. So there's a strategy to winning. And the believer is the one that win. It's the believer that win because they believe the word. They believe the creator. And since they believe the word and believe the creator, they want to keep his word because that's how they win the war. They want to obey him because that's how they win the war. You got to be clear on what the war is. The war is whether or not we're going to turn on Yah or not. That was the problem why he came to save us. Because we don't obey him. We don't do what he said. We do what we want to do. And we have a fallen nature. So now we're repenting from that. The gospel came. We admitted that we're defeated. We're sinners. The ways of sin is death. We repented from that. We gave the op we were given the opportunity to be saved. We accepted it. And now we gotta change our thinking. We were walking in defeat. We was walking in sin because of the way we think. 
Because out of the heart, think, flows the issues of life. Out of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever's in your brain going to come out in your lifestyle, whatever's in your brain is going to come out of your mouth. And what's been coming out of mankind's heart and mouth is death, sin. So when we accepted him, when we received him into our life as our savior, as our Mashiach, as our as our Messiah, we were forgiven for our sins, and now we're going through a mind renewal process that we don't go back in the sin, right? And that's why I said, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. You're going through a transformation process. By how? By the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. There's some things in your mind that are not right. We got grudges in our mind. How we think. We got, we got, we got things against one another. Now, <clears throat> going back, let, let's go back to Second Corinthians uh, ten, right, and 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 and, and, and three, right. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons, weapons, y'all, of our warfare are not carnal. So we know we got to deal with the mind with weapons. And it's not carnal because it's the word, it's spiritual, right? But mighty through Yah. Mighty through Yah. His, the word is mighty through Yah. And what does it do? Pull down strongholds. You've been captured mentally. Mentally, you're captured. Right? Whatever your sin might be, or plural, sins might be, it happens in your mind. And that's why, again, we got to hide the word in our heart that we might not sin against it. We got we to gotta get the word inside of our thinking and what the word is going to do is combat our stinking thinking, our carnal thinking, our evil thinking. And we're going to willingly side with the word. The flesh is going to uh, um, lust against the word, and the word is going to lust against the flesh. That's stinking thinking. They're contrary to one to another. We understand we can't do what we want to do. Right? What we want to do lines up with our old thinking. But there's a way that Yah wants us to think so he can rescue us, so he can deliver us. Because he's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Sin will kill you. The problem is sin. And we think sinful. And the way you think is how you live. Being clear on what's going on now. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yah to the pulling down of who you used to be. And who you used to be is how you saw yourself, how you thought. So here come the word on the scene. The word was made flesh, remember? In the beginning was the word. The word was with Yah, and the word was Yah. Yah is his word. And the first say, he was in the world, and the world's made by him. And the world knew him not. Who was in the world? The word. How was the word in the world? 14 verse. Say, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us as the son. The word was born in a body. And if you're born, you're either going to be a son or a daughter. He was a male. The word became a male living inside of the body, the son. So the word came to live the perfect life to be the perfect example, then died in the place of man because he was found fashioned as a man. He died on that tree for our sins. That whosoever believe in him, believe in who? The word. And the work that he did as the son by dying in our place. So the gospel got to us. The gospel was what? The word. The word that came from Yah that came out of his mouth and would not return void. What is it going to do? Save the believer. 
the unbeliever is condemned already because he has not believed. But it's the believer. And the believer is going to admit that their thinking is sinful, their lifestyle is wrong. And they're going to receive the word and they're going to repent from who they used to be. That old stinking thinking. And they're going through a mind renewal process. And the renewal process is happening through the word. Because they're hiding the word in their heart. They're studying to show themselves approved. They're reading the word. They're meditating in it. They're assembling. You know how the word said, uh, uh, for, forsake not the assembling. Hebrews 10 25, for, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as we see the day approaching. The day is approaching, y'all. It's getting real out here. The day is approaching for a, a, a doomsday for the wicked and the completion of our salvation, the rescue mission. And we're supposed to be assembling to get the word so we can meditate in the word and what the word is going to do when we uh, allow it to come in is going to cast down imagination. What are you imagining? Somebody you hate? <clears throat> Somebody that you want to sleep with? What are you imagining? Floss mode? What, what, what are you imagining? Because whatever imaginations we have, if it go against the word, we let the word in and the word is going to do its job. The word, the word is not afraid of your stinking thinking. But are you willing to let the word have preeminence in your life? Do you believe the most high to the point that you're going to let him in? He stood at the door and knocked. Remember, he was found fashioned as a man. He humbled himself. The creator humbled himself. The creating word uh, became humble being found fashioned as a man, he became humble on the death, even the death on what they call the cross. He stood at the door. We heard. We knocked, He knocked. We heard. We let him in. Now he's in. And what he's doing is he's casting down imagination. No, that thought will destroy you. I came to destroy that thought in you. I, look, you shall know the truth. The truth is the word. You should know the truth and what the truth is going to do. Make you free. Free from the, 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 the bondage of sin. Because the wages of sin is death. He didn't come to change sin. He came to change you. Sin is condemned in the flesh. And he came in to cast it out of us. But we got to allow it. If we fall in love with a stronghold, a thought that's strong in our life, if we love a thought, a sinful thought, more than we love him, we got a problem. And the word is able to cast that stronghold down, that habit, something we do often, that habit, the word is strong enough to cut that joker down if we allow it to. We can't stop the word. Why, why the, the word teaches, grieve not the Ruach HaKadosh. Grieve not the spirit of Yah. Grieve not the word. Don't fight against the word. Don't side with your evil nature. You want to be saved? I'm trying to show you how. Do not side with your wickedness. Expose your wickedness. Be honest about it. Not honest about it to the point that you admit it, but you're still going to give it refuge. You're still going to let it live. You know that, that, that thought is of the devil you know it, it has you captive, but you refuse to let the word to destroy it. Look, he that covereth his sins will not prosper. If you cover how you think, you can verbally say, I love you or I like you. You can verbally say, I forgive you. You can verbally say, yeah, I'm with you verbally, right? I'm with you. You know, you know, you know, that verbal, drawing nigh on him with your mouth, honoring him with your lips, but your heart is far from him. You don't want that. Forget the verbal, right? He that covereth his sins is, is verbal. They don't mean it. He that covereth his sins will not prosper, but he that confess, you're being honest and forsake. You couldn't forsake the sin without his word. 
You couldn't do it. But you receive power after the spirit of his word has come upon you. Ain't number one spirit, y'all. Read Ephesians 4. Ain't number one spirit. The word is the spirit. Yahushua said, the words that I speak unto you are spirit and life, or ruah. You shall receive power after the ruah come upon you. What's the ruah? The spirit of his word. Baptized inside of you. Giving you the ability to cooperate with his word. If you have intentions upon cooperating with what he say, that's the war. Because our nature fights against the word. And the word is fighting against our nature. The one that win is the believer that trusts the word and is going to allow the word. The word ain't going to force its way in you now. It's going to allow the word. I'm going to allow the word to destroy all those thoughts that go against Yah. I'm being transformed by the renewing of my mind. I'm changing every day to become more and more like him through accepting his word and allowing his word to cast down imaginations, my imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yah. Don't mess around and call yourself falling in love with somebody that you're sinning with. Because now the word got a heck of a job to do. The word is more than capable of doing the job. But we're equally as capable as stopping him. No, I don't want to let this go. No, I hate them. No, I'm not going to cooperate. We can stop the word. Because he's not going to force none of nobody, none of us to be saved. Whosoever will let him come. I said before you both, life and death, choose life. It's a choice. So the word will come in casting down imaginations. And every high thing, the word ain't going to miss nothing. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yah. And bringing into captivity, look what it's going to bring. Every thought. The word is going to snatch your thoughts and change them into the thoughts of Yah, into the will of Yah. Oh, it's the truth, y'all. Look, Romans 7, we've been messing with it some, so Romans 7 and 23, look what it says. This is Saul talking and calling Paul, y'all. He said, but I see another member, I see another law. In my members, warring against the law of my mind. Because it's all in the mind. And, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin and death. See, he has a renewed mind. He has a mind to obey the most high. But there's something fighting against that. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The thoughts of Satan, the thoughts of his evil nature is fighting against the word. Now, again, the word is capable of defeating the spirit of Satan, the spirit of disobedience. It's capable of tearing him down if we allow it. But I see another law. In my members, warring against the law of my mind. I see, I see another law working in me, waging war. <laughs> waging war, trying to make me a prisoner to the law of sin. So I got to cooperate. It's great to be the type of person that admit you know, I be sinning. I'm wrong. That's just one step, though. That does not set you free. You got to methodically sit down, reading the word, studying to show yourself approved, finding your freedom in the word, and then cooperating with it. Cooperating with the word because there are lifestyles. There are things people do that go against the word. 
and we give it refuge either through 100% rebellion, through accepting false doctrine because we want to justify how we live because we want to continue to do it. No. You got to look, look, look what the word do. I'm going to read it again. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons, it's a war. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not natural, y'all. But mighty through y'all, through the pulling down of stronghold. Okay, now it's a lifestyle. Now I'm in love. Now I'm vested. It becomes a strong. It's way bigger than a thought. It's way bigger than just a desire. It, it, it's become a part of my entire life. So it's a stronghold. It grabbed me. Makes me want to believe false doctrine because I've been captured. I don't want the truth because the truth is going to tear down my lifestyle. Nuh -uh. I don't want to hear that. I don't, I don't want to hear that, right? It's a stronghold. But if you let the word in, the word stands at the door and knock. If any man hear the word open and let the true word in, what he's going to do is cast down imaginations. And these imaginations go against Yah, go against his will, go against his word, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yah. And the knowledge of Yah is his word. And bringing captivity, every thought, every thought, we got to be willing to look at that thought and say, did that come from Yah? See, we can't make up Yah according to the figment of our imagination. He way bigger than our stinking thinking and our imagination. We going to make up his character. Oh, he's love. Don't nothing else matter. You know that's a lie. You can't take a piece of the word, take it out of context. He's also the judge. He also said the wages of sin is death. And he's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. He hasn't changed his mind. He's changing us, right? And bringing into captivity every thought, the way you think. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. In the heart are the issues of life. If you're going to obey Yah and be saved, it's going to happen in your mind. If you're going to accept the gospel, it's going to happen in your mind. If you disobey him, it happens in the mind. And that's why the word, if you let it in, will cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself. It's going to rise up and want to take control of your life. It exalts itself against the knowledge of Yah. And what the word is going to do is bring into captivity every thought woo, to the obedience of the Mashiach, of the Messiah. It's all in your mind, y'all. All of it. So what we need to do, and what I plan to do today, is look at my thinking and the thoughts that I have that's trying to make refuge in my life, I'm going to put the word on it. And what the word going to do is cast that junk down if it don't line up with his will. And what I got to do is not look at it about to leave, the word grab it, and finna cast it down. And I say, no! I love him. No, I hate them. No, I want to do what I want to do. I got to allow the word. I got to allow the word to do what it do. And what it can do is present me blameless before his presence. If I let the word have free course in my life. And I pray you do the same. Let's pray. Spirit of the most high, we love you. Thank you for this opportunity to come before you on this morning. A gleaning in your word with every intention on letting the word have free course in our life. It's able to present us blameless. All we got to do is cooperate. And the true believer of your word will cooperate and obey. We trust you for this. We thank you for this. And we celebrate our deliverance in the matchless name of Yahushua. I'm see when we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all may. Conference unmuted. That was just a sermonette, y'all. I just wanted to uh, attempt to make the word uh, completely plain on this morning. I pray uh, that's exactly what happened. If it did happen for you, 
would you be willing to push the share button so it can happen for somebody else? Um, push the share button. Super easy to go witnessing. Uh, push the share button. Bless you, Cliff. Um, if if you're a supporter of the ministry um, and, and would like to support the ministry, I can just tell you how. Um, if you have the cash app, you can just go to the cash app and put in uh, the dollar sign Yahuwah. That's dollar sign Y-A-H-U-A. Again, dollar sign Y-A-H-U-A. Do not put the final H on there. Y-A-H-U-A and sow a seed. Um, if you want to talk about the word, you know, let's do that too. All you got to do is dial 302-202-1102, extension 815648. Again, 302-202-1102, extension 815648, and come on the line and let's talk about the word. Love you all, and thanks for hanging out. Y'all be Baruch and Baraka Shalom. I'm gone.